Welcome to the What's Happening Birmingham video podcast. This podcast is brought to you by the Jefferson County Department of Health. Hello, everyone. This is Jarvis S. Scott with What's Happening Birmingham. Today, I got the honor and pleasure, one face you have seen before, Dr. Cree Johnson and her husband, Jay Johnson, the Johnsons. They are coming on podcast because they're just good friends of mine. But no, they actually came on today to talk about a serious topic. Um, recently, they are, uh, uh, say, to the grace of God, they are, they recovered from COVID, a uh, breakthrough case, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so kind of tell me your, your story. How did, how did it all happen for you all, both of you two? Want to go first? All right. So we um, got our vaccines early in a course. So we were given Pfizer vaccine. The end of December, we got our first shot. The first of January, we got our second shot. So, yeah. you know, the, the, the rule was about six months after your vaccine, we started to see more people have breakthrough um, cases. But it was also the same time that we started seeing the ramp up of the Delta variant, which is the mutation of the COVID uh, virus. So the, they were doing all this meeting. So we were coming up on our eighth, eighth month. Um, about the middle of September when, you know, all of this, this happened. So Jay actually ended up getting his third, um, third shot, the end of August, mm -hmm. but we think that he got his third shot the day before or two before he got COVID. I'll mm -hmm. let him tell that part. Yeah. I just was, yeah. I'm not sure where I got it from, but I think it was like August 26th or 28th. Mm -hmm. And then seven days later, tested positive. Yeah. Oh, wow. So when you first took the first COVID vaccine shot, did either one of you uh, have any symptoms and any, any side effects or anything, you know, after? Um, we had the first shot. It was no one was really talking about uh, symptoms since we were so early in it. Mm -hmm. So a couple of days after that, I had some tiredness and my arm was I had my arm was really sore. And then for the second shot, I itched. I had like itching, so I needed to take like some Zyrtec and then arm soreness. Did you have anything? Yeah, it was just the same. Arm soreness and just fatigue. That was the biggest thing for me for both shots. So I didn't really have any issues. And so it even um, once we caught COVID, you know, it was pretty much almost the same symptoms. Mm -hmm. Pretty much the same symptoms. Was it any point like did you all even have to think about maybe going to see you know, to the hospital, emergency room, they ever get through that time? It did not. So what, I, what I've been recommending people is if you are um, diagnosed with COVID to go ahead and let your primary care doctor know, because the day we got diagnosed, we called primary care and they got us in for the um, antibody infusion. So we got that infusion the same day that we tested positive. So it was really early in our illness so we were able, I think that a lot of what we could have experienced and what we experienced was kind of edged off because of the infusion. What do you think? Yeah, I think so. So was it, was it the thing in the previous interview I saw it was like monoclonal, what, how do you pronounce it? Uh -huh, the monoclonal antibodies, which gives you a burst of, of the antibodies that, um, that, from, that can fight off COVID uh, faster, quicker. So have you all gotten any experience any long-term symptoms since fully being recovered? No, I lost my sense of taste and smell for like three days. Uh, and it came back, like it came back. Mm -hmm. I didn't lose my sense of taste and smell. I had like this transient fatigue. So I would get up and feel okay. But about middle of the day, I was tired and wanted to take a nap. And my hands ached, but I did actually had it as a side effect of my second shot. My hands, I had achiness and Jay had some achiness and um, a rash on his leg that we noticed before we even tested positive, which was kind of what prompted us to do the, you know, do the testing for COVID because we saw the rash on his leg, which was something that was, we had, you know, wouldn't like allergies or wouldn't kind of a normal something that we would be seeing. Did any of you experience like any loss of appetite? that time no mm -mm, mm -mm. we had good appetite and somebody fed us, <laughs> fed us <good. laughs> we were intent on eating well you know during that time so we ate 
we we stopped the fast food and stuff like that. So we tried to drink lots of water, lots of electrolytes, and made sure we had home cooked meals during that time. Now that you experienced like both of y'all having it, what would you tell people, you know, that haven't had COVID, you know, had a chance, you know, gotten it, that would be like, hey, you don't want to get this. Okay. <laughs> Oh, my advice for um, people who have not gotten COVID is I don't really think that we're now beyond just being in a pandemic. We're in what's called an endemic. So it's not, you know, we're going to do all we can to not get it. But it's not if not now is when we all at least are exposed enough to have it. And you want your body to have the, the vaccine. And we have very mild symptoms. And I do attribute that to the vaccine. And I think that if you have the vaccine, we have measures like the infusion, we can give our, our bodies a running chance of, you know, beating this thing and doing well as a result of it, but we have to do our part. So you don't want this. And even though we had what seemed was mild, that still was a scary 14 days of waiting to see if something was going to happen each day. You're like, whoo, we had a good day. You know, that every day got a little bit better, but I think it was because of the vaccine. I agree. What I know you probably have heard this since you both got it. People probably say, Well, why should I get it? They, 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 they both got the shot, he got it three times and he still got it. What, what do you say to people who you know have asked you all that, or even people that's watching, you know, will be watching this podcast? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is it's not a cure, it's a preventative, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that's the big uh misconception out there, you know. and you know, when so many people talk about, you know, they want to be careful about what they put in their bodies and stuff like that. Uh, I understand. But to a certain extent, you know, like if you drink, if you eat out, you know, you don't know any of that stuff that you put in your body, you know. And so you just hope that what they say is the content of, let's say, the food, you know, that should be beneficial to your body is in there and it doesn't have any side effects or anything like that. But, um, but, you know, and then when you talk about, you know, let's do, you know, people who say they want to do their research, like, when are they doing their research? You know, what is their research? Are they, you know, they talk about not using media, mass media talking points, but that's what's guiding their research. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you are, you know, looking at, you know, trained scientists, you know, who are the ones that's driving this initiative uh, for the vaccination and the mass, you know, the mass herd vaccination and all that kind of stuff like that. Like these are the people who are talking about it every day. These are the people who are doing it every day. Like it's a education. difference. It's a difference when you have conversations about COVID and your job is to research COVID. Mm -hmm. And so we can have conversations all day long about the effects, the pros and cons, the political viewpoints, the, the, the those who have lost, you know, uh, family members or friends to it. But if your job is not researching it every day, if you're not in the, the, the trenches of it, then you can't really, you, you can only wait. You can only wait on that because even the research today is going to be put out comes from people who are in it every day, you know? And so at some point in time, you have to say, okay, great. I got to trust those who are the experts in this area, you know, and, and look at the numbers and, and not really so much put the emphasis on what the government is trying to do like the government won't exist if they don't have people to govern you know and at the end of the day death is a business that's never going to go out you know it's never going to end but a lot of other people suffer behind this ignorance and so you know i mean to to help each other out we have to conform you know you have to be okay with saying all right great let me go ahead and put this in the hands of the expert and go from there Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah, I agree. And I think to add and say um, the vaccine is there for us to have enough pr pr protection. So our body has seen it before. So our body knows how to fight. This is something that our bodies had never seen. So we're trying to set up a system and teach our body to fight something that is never gone into war, prepare for war, you know, that kind of thing for. So I think that you know, no vaccine or no, no treatment really is 100%. You know, your goal is to get the treatment that you need so that you can do better in the face of it. 
And to, to piggyback off of what Jay said, I think that we're at a point of saying we have to trust trust the science. We're in a live science experience, experiment. I'm a, I got a biology background and science changes every single day. So a lot of people are like, well, they were lying when they said no mask and now they tell us to put the mask on. They're just lying. It's like, it's not a lie. It is the ebbs and flows of science. And if you don't have a science degree, you've never done science experiments, you don't, you don't really understand all the ins and outs that goes into what we have today. But okay. yeah, like the big thing, like, you know, for me, you know, I couldn't imagine what, you know, this COVID experience would have been like without it. You know, it wasn't, of course, you know, it was not a pleasurable experience, but it wasn't the worst, you know, uh, being someone who has What's the terminology created for me? Like health challenges? Oh, comorbidities. Yeah. To wh whoever had what she just said, <laughs> um, you know, the concern would have been like, you know, would I have to go to the hospital or anything like that? And, you know, not having to do that, you know, just, you know, still being able to get out and walk around the neighborhood, you know, to stretch my lungs and, you know, just put my body through the, to the test, you know, it was it wasn't bad at all. You know, and I, and I know people who've had worse and I feel so bad for those. Um, but as someone who has received the vaccination, who, of course, was skeptical in the beginning, portions of it, mm -hmm. um, but I'm so happy that I got it, happy, you know, beneficial to get that. Th I mean, benefited from the third shot. And I believe like when I caught it, that third shot and that infusion probably was working with my body. Mm -hmm. And the best way I can describe it to my friends is like when COVID came in my body, and I got that infusion. It was just like a car full of my homeboys pulled up and was like, <laughs> you know, what's up, COVID? And COVID wasn't ready for all that. And it lost, you know, and it was even when I lost my sense of smell uh, and taste for, you know, two or three days, um, it wasn't bad. It was just like, man, it's gone. And then I was like, oh, it's it's coming right back. Like it's coming back. And so, um, you know, that that's I, I have to say, I can only attribute it to the vaccination and the infusion, you know, because without it, you know, I, I just can't imagine. So for those who are not vaccinated, you know, that's their preference. But man, I can't imagine going through this without any help. And my body needed all the help it can get. Yeah, that's true. And I want you, Dr. Cree, I guess you kind of say, put your doctor hat back on. Um, you know, all of us being African-Americans, it seemed like three three things that African-Americans, is for some reason, we just get as we get older, and I guess I call it the triple. I think you told me this a couple of years ago the triple C's or the triple high blood pressure, yeah. cholesterol, and then I guess it's instead of the D, diabetes, and how that yeah. makes it more because when you do that and then you beat COVID, it's almost like death is almost knocking at the door. Yeah, yeah, not almost, it is. You know, those are things that in the face of COVID as to be your your a hindrance to you and your body trying to fight it because in the second half of COVID, your body goes into this this high um, inflammatory process or if it goes into a cytokine storm, that's what we call it, that's going to be the person that ends up on, you know, the ventilator. They ended up, you know, face down trying to catch the oxygen. So you, but we never know who's going to, um, to tolerate that and body's gonna kick in and do all they can to keep the inflammation as low as possible. So it's it's been really amazing that some people do really, really well despite their comorbidities and some people have not, but we do have a tool that can help us. And I, I just encourage everyone, if they're on the fence and on the on the edge, we're living proof that you can get it and 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 do well, you know, do well with it, even in the face of, of having COVID the vaccine did. Did it work for us? Well, can I ask you one more thing? Put your doctor hat back on again and convince these people that watching this podcast right now, and Jay gonna laugh at me when I say this too, to get that flu shot. In the, in the midst of all oh, yeah. this, you know, going on, why it's so important to get your flu shot coming up this, you know, upcoming season. I think that it's very important to get your flu shot. Here we are. The If you look back in all the years ago, 1918 was when we had the flu um, epidemic. Here we are 100 years, almost history repeating itself. And we're able to, people make their choice to get the flu shot now because of all the things that we went through 100 something years ago um, when we had our flu epidemic. 
But in order to continue to make that choice, we have to get the shots. So take the shot. We have good herd immunity with the flu shot. Um, however, people still die from the flu. And everybody's like, oh my gosh, the flu wasn't here last year. We were in masks. We were, you know, real serious about social distancing. We were staying at home, but the world is back open. It's wide open. The flu is already out in circulation, plus COVID. And I have seen of people having flu and COVID together. And that is not a combination that I would want. So, you know, as of October, go start getting your flu shot. You can get them at your local pharmacies. Do whatever you can to do to get them. Okay, so any final thoughts, Jay? Uh, the Cree, or they want to follow you on social media or, you know. No, you go first. Um, I just encourage everyone to, you know, talk to your primary care doctor, talk to your specialist uh, and, and let them help you make your decision because every some people have reasons that they may not be a, a candidate for the vaccine. Everyone won't be able to get it, but let's do our job to protect those people and to protect the kids. Kids aren't yet able to get the, uh, the shots. So I would say talk to the people who are really up on the research, who have science degrees, who are, you know, doing just more than Googling, you know, Google is not your best friend and who also know your history and can compare and say, well, you got this situation. It may not be for you, but it is for it. It is for some and it may not be for a few subset of people. So talk to your primary care doctor. Uh, if you don't have a primary care, get a doctor. And I am a physician, family medicine physician, board certified in Birmingham, Alabama. And my practice is Brownstone Healthcare. And if you want to know more about Brownstone, you can go to www.brownstonehealthcare.com or follow me on social media at Dr. Cree. That's D-O-C-T-O-R-K-R. Awesome. And I think that uh, from, you know, just the average Joe Schmo uh, perspective, I think it's it's required, like it's your civic duty to protect yourself, you know, uh, and what that means. You know, it doesn't matter what political point you're trying to prove. It doesn't matter, you know, what jargon you're using to try to impress other individuals. It's really about impressing yourself, you know, and, and taking care of yourself. And that's really the big deal. Like you can look in the mirror all day long and talk about how you stand on this side of the aisle or, you know, why you don't believe that you should put this in your body. But once you step outside, you put yourself at risk and others at risk. When you go into a restaurant, a convenience store, a grocery store, you know, when you go to the park, wherever you go, it's at risk. And this is something that's all around us. You know, it is it is the new type of uh, crime towards your body, you know, and it's just it can hurt us, you know, and that's the biggest thing. If we want the world to get back to some sort of normalcy, then you have to take the proper steps. You know, and, and so I encourage individuals to get out there, you know, those who can hear us like, you know, do yourself a service and, and, and take make yourself a priority, you know, get the vaccination, you know, do whatever you can to help fight this. So that way we can hopefully it can become eradicated and we can get back to our normal interactions, hugging each other, going to church together and just being able to. Uh, not let this dominate every conversation where we go, because regardless of where you go, it's going to be the first and last thing people talk about. And I'm just tired of talking about it. So I'd rather talk about other fun things, college football, you know, NFL, whatever it is, video games, anything else but this, you know, but this is dominating all media It's dominating every uh, corner of the earth. So uh, do us all a favor and protect yourself. So that way we can have something else to talk about. Um, uh, Jay Johnson, you can follow me on all social media platforms. Uh, my company name is College Prep U. Uh, we help students navigate the college admission process to get into college. So you can go to our website at www.collegeprepu. That's with the letter U.com. So collegeprepu.com. And you can follow that same handle on Instagram, Facebook, as well as Twitter. Yeah, I'm gonna bring you on for a future sec. So you, you, you've been wow. you've been booked. He don't know yet <laughs> for, for a future segment. But one last thing, you know, since I got you in front of me, and I know how sometimes these people be watching. Please tell these folks that these vitamins ain't enough to save them either. People go get the black seed oil and the sea moss. All oh, that ain't coming. Nothing that came to COVID. <laughs> or for Vic. yeah, so yeah. <laughs> You can take your, your vitamins, but also be mindful that you need to take your, your prescribed medicines as well. Take your 
high blood pressure medicines, your diabetes medicine. If the doctor told you to take it, take that. And that may save your life. And also take your vaccine. Do you know, wash your hands, social distance, take your vitamins, and do what your doctor recommends. So there's a place for it, but I don't think there is a place for it in isolation. So make sure that we are doing that plus everything else. And Jarvis, I don't understand. Like people are not willing to 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 take a chance on drugs that scientists created for humans, but they're okay circulating a rumor of taking like horse pills, you know, tranquilizers and stuff like that. Like that's, I, I couldn't even get it. I only believe it's real. I still believe people just saying it as a joke. Not a joke. But, but the fact that, you know, someone actually would try that is just mind blowing to me. Yeah, right. So yeah, I mean, like what I echo what, what Chris says, you know, and just, Follow the experts. That's it. Follow the experts. It's a new trend. That's how I look at it. It's a trend. If we follow trends, the new trend is uh, living a healthy, long life. And this is how you get to that trend. Hey, Jarvis, let me add one more thing. This year in Alabama, um, the death rate has uh, exceeded the birth rate. So Mm -hmm. we had like 60,000, you know, deaths to like 50 something thousand births. And that's all partly in, in, in due to COVID. So just let, let this sit in. You know, we're dying out at an alarming rate because of this virus, because we will not take um, take the precautions. We're fatigued. We have COVID fatigue. We don't want to do this anymore. We're tired of the people telling us what to do. When in all actuality, we're killing out, you know, killing out our lifeline, you know, our legacy. All of that is being shrunk because we want to do what we want to do. And I saw on the news today, too, that even, I guess, as of, you know, today, we're, you know, taping, you know, I'm probably going to put this out later on today, Alabama leads the nation now in death rate for COVID. Like, we just took the the number one spot, you know, hopefully that ranking might change, but I just saw that on the news like two or three hours ago, and I was like, wow. 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 So, lead the state in, in deaths and then lead last place in almost in vaccines. You yeah. know, we're down at the bottom of the list. So, you know, wow. So it's like, woo. So on <laughs> that note, thank you all. I would love, I'm going to have you all back on again. Have you for college prep? Because I think that's going to be real interesting, especially mm-hmm. doing all this virtual and everything. And I have to bring you back on too, Dr. Creek, because it's been a while. Right. One of the health segments. Yeah, thank you, Thanks well, for thank having us. Thanks, Jarvis. Oh, yeah. So thank you all for watching. Please check out what's happening from Birmingham.com for more videos. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank y'all again. Have a great day. And everybody, go get this shot. This it was just let's go on get this thing over with. So, like Jay said, we have something else to talk about. All right, y'all. Awesome. Thank y'all again. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching the What's Happening Birmingham video podcast. Please check out our website, app, or subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest videos today.